Okay, let's have a look at the R380 gearbox from the outside. First of all, we're going to be uh, pointing things out. So here we go. Bell housing. No idea why it's called that. I'm sure you can tell me why. And on the bell housing, we have the uh, clutch slave cylinder housing just here. Looking into your bell housing, we have um, the uh, pivot for the clutch fork and it's bolted here. This is where your uh, release bearing will run on for releasing your clutch pressure plate. This is the input shaft and the splines are where your clutch is. At the back here you have a seal. The bell housing is held on by six bolts and you also have dowel pegs. Now these are really important to add strength and to locate the bell housing properly. There's also a core plug just up here. Now this can leak. It seems the last person who fitted this also used some RTV to stop it from leaking. Input shaft, constant pinion is what it's called because this will be rotating all the time that your engine's running. This is the input shaft seal or the constant pinion seal which can leak if you have problems. Usually when your breather's blocked. And this is where your clutch master cylinder is bolted to with two bolts. Okay, the breather pipe, which uh, is very important. I'll just get these levers out of the way and show you where it's bolted to. You have a banjo bolt here, which is bolted to the rear part of the gearbox casing, and it's held by a P-clip down here, and you need to make sure that that's clear. Main gearbox and uh, rear end casing, um, there's a few of those. And on the main gearbox casing, you have your fill level plug, which is just here, and you have your drain plug, and also next to that you have an ID number plate which is very important if you need to find out what ratio your gearboxes are. Well this is actually a 56A and it's a J suffix. The back end of the gearbox we have an output shaft with splines on it. These uh, can wear. Uh, you have a boss and a seal. Now looking just off to the right and follow the camera down this is where if the seal leaks it is an escape route for the oil and the hole where that is will let the oil drip out. There's an oil pump here and uh, this is the oil pump itself. Um, it's one unit sealed and it has to be fitted one way. The advantage here on the R380 is that it is actually uh, driven by the lay shaft directly compared to the uh, LT77 which has a uh, square peg drive which fits in and then fits into the uh, lane shaft. Okay, looking on the other side of the gearbox, reverse light switch plugged in on the loom and then you have a uh, bypass. This itself comes from the oil pump and uh, goes back into the gearbox and uh, believe it or not you can fit an oil cooler onto this top of the gearbox you have your uh, gear selecting levers left hand side main gearbox and then this one which is the linkages to your transfer box okay they're not connected on the, this gearbox because the transfer box is not there this one you have your uh, transfer box controls and um, you obviously know how these work if you see how this moves backwards and forwards you can see the levers moving now this one is starting to seize up okay this will be your diff lock and uh, this one is your high and low selector you see the movement here they need some attention on occasion especially when you're refitting the gearbox and in the top here it's starting to get a little bit stiff because there's uh, no rubber boot on the top of here okay main h box as some people like to call it seal missing now there's um, springs in there it should have rubber boots on both of them should have rubber boots on to give it a fairly good seal as you can see here inside the hbox selector you have your um, wonderful plate and springs now you know if this plate is broken that you're going to have a sloppy gear stick okay so these springs are very important there's what you get the resistance on your gear stick with Comparison here between the uh, two gearboxes, R380 and LT77. What we're seeing here is the lay shaft is actually longer. One of the main differences is the uh, reverse gear idler. 
Now this is from the LT77 and it's on a uh, shaft and what happens with this is that when you select it you have to actually push the selector the idler into place okay difference R380 is the reverse idler gear is in constant mesh between the uh, main shaft and the lay shaft this is fixed and it doesn't slide in or out as you like okay so a little comparison with the gears this is the fifth gear from the R38 in the LT77 and as you can see the one of them is a little bit longer the depth of um, cut on the gear is exactly the same however there is a bit of difference in size not that it matters and for anybody who is interested in uh, stripping and reassembling these gearboxes we'll uh, have a look at the inside of the R380 and the LT77 and I'll take you through how the gearbox actually works